Hi everyone, welcome to this week's edition of the Java Tip of the Week. This will be our third edition and I hope that you're enjoying my latest videos. This week we're going to talk about streams. The streams API was something introduced in Java 8. You can think of them as a sequence of elements where you can apply multiple operations like filtering, mapping, ordering, or sorting. It was something that Java was really in need because it was very hard to perform these operations uh, on previous Java versions since you pretty much have to write this code on your own. Streams might seem as collections, but they're actually not. Collections only care how they store their elements or how you can retrieve them, while streams, they only care how they can optimize the applying of these operations. Let's look into some examples. So this example comes from my World of Warcraft patch action house project sitting on GitHub. In here, I have a list of objects, which are actually auctions. Uh, that I only want to persist into my database if the price of the auction is higher than 100. So this is what this code is doing over here. The code doesn't seem complicated, but uh, if you have to add more things into it, it might get uh, a little more. You can write these using streams in a more efficient way. So let's see how you can do that. We can pick the original collection, which is items, and now we can call a stream method over there. You might find it funny that you have a stream method on a collection interface. Well, Java 8 introduces something called uh, default methods on interfaces that allow you to actually add a default implementation to an interface method. So in this way, uh, we are, uh, Java 8 uh, can evolve interfaces without breaking compatibility with older implementations. I might approach this in a much more detail in a future video. Anyway, uh, calling stream, the first operation I want to do based on the pr previous code that I have is to map it into an auction. So I will call the method called map. So map receives uh, an anonymous in the class, which is a function uh, that receives the type of the input uh, parameter and then the type of the output that I want to convert. So in this case, it's going to be an auction. Now to convert it, since I know that actually that object is an auction, I can just uh, cast uh, the object to auction. And that's it. Now the cool thing about stream is that they allow me to chain methods all together. So map actually is going to return uh, a new stream, but this time it's going to be a stream of auctions uh, since I just converted them to an auction. Uh, the first, the second, next operation I'm going to perform is the filtering. So I can call filter, and this I just add a new anonymous in the class that is a predicate. And on the predicate, I can perform the, comp the a Boolean operation, so to filter the elements on this stream. So in this case, I'm going to say return auction uh, get buyout uh, greater than 100, and that's it. Finally, I want to persist them. So I can also call uh, something called the for each, which is kind of like a for, but allows you to once again pass an anonymous in the class, which is a consumer, uh, and it is something that's going to be applied to every element of the stream that uh, satisfy the previous conditions of the filtering. So now I can just do uh, the entity manager dot persist and pass the auction there. So this code does exactly the same as the previous code. You might find it funny as well that I actually type much more code and seems much complicated to read it in this way. Please don't miss the video for next week because I'm going to show you how to use lambdas to really simplify this code and to make this code much cooler and nicer. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week.